All right, 3D printing people, I am going to give you a quick walkthrough here of your view, move, rotate, and scale options. Uh, those are the biggest ones you need to use in order to get the object oriented on the build plate here in a way that works for printing. So the first thing I'm going to do is load an object. I do that by clicking the load button and browsing to the uh, STL file that I have stored on my hard drive. Now, I'm going to go with the dragon here. Now the first thing it's going to tell us is that this is not on the build platform. It's off the platform. Do you want to put it on the platform? Well yeah, sure, why not? Let's do that. Okay, but see how it's still all red around it? That's because this model has problems. One, because it's at a weird angle. Now, we could use the move option if we wanted to, to try to get it to the right angle, but the quickest and easiest way to do it is just go to edit here, go to surface to platform, and then double click on the surface that you want to attach to the platform. So we're going to double click here on the bottom, boom, it automatically puts that on the platform. We click the back button here. All right, now all that we have to do is make this dragon a little bit smaller because it's still popping through the roof of our 3D printer here. So in order to do that, <coughs> we'll go down here to the scale button. No model is selected, so we're going to select the model here. And where it says 100%, we're going to type in 75% and hit enter. Now because we've got uniform scaling here, everything is still at 75% and it reduced our model all in equal ratio and now it's a good size it fits on our build platform and it's not sticking out the top and so from here we can just exit out and we're good now I promised you an overview of view move and rotate so I'm gonna hit on those as well um, let's start with view now usually I right click and then pan in order to change my view but if you want to you have the option of clicking here on view and alternating between these set views top view bottom view right view left view you get the idea uh, and this can be helpful especially if now I find it more useful in CAD programs when I get lost this environment you're not super super likely to get lost in but if you do get disoriented and you're like where am I what's going on you just click view and orient yourself real fast with a front view and that'll put you right in front of the object if you want to uh, another option we have here is move. Now move lets you move the object two different ways. You can click on move and you can click the object and just move it around. As you see I'm doing, I hit Y, I can uh, move it basically anywhere I want on the build plate. Now it's keeping it snapped to the build plate for me, which is nice, which means it's not moving it uh, on the Z axis, but it is moving it on the X and Y axis for me. Another way to do it is to go in here and actually type in the coordinates that you want to move it to, which you can also do. Again, I find it easier to click and drag for this particular function. Now, with rotate, the exact opposite is true. I find it easier when I'm dealing with rotate to type in the set number of degrees that I want it to move. So again, I can click and drag this object, but you see how it's dragging it in weird intervals. And I get to, I want it just to be 90 degrees, right? But I'm stuck here fluctuating between 60 and 90 and 120. And where is this thing going? And why, why am I doing this to myself, right? Instead, I can just click here, type in 90, hit enter, and voila, it's taken care of. So I like to use the the typing function here when I'm rotating something. However, when I'm moving or viewing, I prefer to use the mouse option. Uh, the last option here is scale, which we already touched on. Uh, and what you're noticing with these buttons is you click on them once and nothing really happens. What it is basically doing is selecting that option. So if you want to do something with your mouse, you can. But a second click actually brings up the box there. So if we click on scale, so click on it once, you've got nothing, click on it twice, it brings up the box. So again, with scaling, if you want to, now this has already been reset, so it's considering the size that we re re resized it to, to now be 100%. But if you wanted to, we could again go in here and make this bigger or smaller. Let's see, type in 50%. Ah, oh, look, it's a lot littler now. Now we could do that if we wanted to, uh, you know, obviously make a smaller one faster, uh, you know, make a, a, a miniature model of it, what have you. 
But again, this is how you would scale the dimensions of something. All right, guys, that's it for now. I've talked to you for about five minutes, so I'll let you go. Uh, take care and good 3D printing.